Elizabeth, you're a leader in the environmental movement, and two things I've observed about you from afar is you have two fairly rare skills still in the among environmental leaders. That's one, you're a skilled, brilliant communicator, and you also are very, very strategic. Would you like to comment on those? Well, it's always hard to comment on someone calling you brilliant. <laughs> so first, <laughs> thank you. Um, I see. Being um, strategy comes fairly naturally to me. I don't know quite why, but I'm always. It, it, I think it comes from being really well grounded in networks that know what's going on. So I don't see myself as a leader. Number one, I see myself as being um, uh, of service to the movement, and I'm an Ottawa operative for a wide network of folks all across the country within Sierra Club of Canada and also those who aren't in. Because what we're looking at is where are the political moments when what you say can make the most difference. So in terms of being strategic, what I'm always looking for is the moment when the issue I most care about can be advanced at the top of a government agenda. It's not always the case that uh, an issue can be. And there's different sets of issues I'm always, I sometimes feel like I'm juggling. A lot of things I really care about and that Sierra Club of Canada really cares about and the movement really cares about. And sometimes I start seeing that moment when, and when I say grounded in good networks, I need to know things like, when is it going to cabinet? Now that's not public knowledge, but you sort of know. If you know within the bureaucracy, you know how it is. You've been in the bureaucracy. You know something's advancing. It's become, it's getting ready. People are talking about it in the Privy Council office. People are talking about it in the Prime Minister's office. Ministers, staffs are aware of it. So at the level of being politically effective, I know when to say to people, now, write your letters now. Get the word into the Prime Minister right now because this is when it's going for decision. That's a, and I also use, uh, and I urge people to do this in my workshops, I do activist training workshops. When you see a political uh, person, when you see an elected politician on the street, whether municipal, federal, provincial, you recognize someone, for heaven's sakes, go up to them and speak to them. Because those random encounters, for me, I mean, that's, that's one of the benefits of, of living in Ottawa, is I run into people, literally on the sidewalk or at other people's events or in the corridors, and I always have, it's almost like I have a, a card file in my head of quick, 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 as I see someone coming, what's the thing that they need to hear right now the most? What's coming, where can they play a role in something important? So I almost always, when running into someone, have on the tip of my tongue something that needs their attention or a way of thanking them for something good they've done recently. So you're always balancing. I mean, I work on, in the last year, we've had successes on uh, a proposal to, start to have large-scale diversions for the Great Lakes has been substantially changed. A new draft has just come out that's not perfect, but it's a lot better. We've gotten a panel review on the Sydney tar ponds cleanup, which I regard as a, a success to have a panel review because the proposal is terrible. We've had really important progress made on the Kyoto measures through the, uh, the new implementation plan that was released in April. But, you know, at any given time, I'm juggling that and the Arctic National Wildlife Refuge and the Mackenzie Gas Project and thinking, or the relicensing of 24D uh, through the uh, Health Ministry. I'm always thinking about what right now is the thing I should mention to the politician I see crossing the street towards me. So I don't know if it's so much, um, I guess it's strategic. It's, it's knowing your moment. It's having timing and having good information. Uh, as far as being a good communicator, that is something that I'm, I'm, I think it's, I think anyone can be an effective communicator. I'm particularly lucky because I was born into a family of activists. My mother was a very good public speaker. And she told me when I was a small baby and she first made her first speech against atmospheric nuclear weapons testing, she was so scared she couldn't figure out how she was going to get up in front of a room full of people and say anything about it and she decided to pretend she was Eleanor Roosevelt. So when I was younger and got up to speak, I'd pretend I was my mother because I knew she could give a damn good speech. Uh, and part of what I think about being a good communicator is always having respect for your audience. Uh, I, f I sometimes find even in the environmental movement we've become such policy wonks and bureaucrats that I've heard friends of mine talk to the media or to a, a room full of people and use acronyms and phrases that are not common to the lay person and it just excludes people so I try to use an inclusive vocabulary I try to, to a friend of mine in the forest industry refers to it as Zeller's language 
you know, Joe O'Neill from New Brunswick. I don't know if you ever run into Joe, but he always says, you know, yeah, you got to talk in seller's language if you want people to understand you. And it's not talking down to anyone. It's just making sure that the language you use has not excluded someone. And I, you know, being an effective communicator is also about uh, having a clear message, knowing what you want to say, and finding about a dozen different ways to keep saying the same thing. So if you're doing media interviews, it eventually sinks through.